it's yours. So now. good morning. I transform myself into a presenter. So I will show you the basically the uh, construction of a, a cartographic data set at the regional uh, level for a certain purpose, which is to study the evolution of the forest. So I will give you an introduction why we are doing this, uh, what kind of materials are available, how we did it, and obviously uh, the results. The problem is well known in the sense that obviously the landscape is changing everywhere, but uh, especially in uh, uh, in the mountains and therefore also in the in the Alps. And the main uh, effects uh, which are visible are progressive uh, uh, decrement of the pasture, so they are abandoned and they are basically uh, vanishing. And this means that uh, on, uh, on, the, on the other hand, you have an increase of forest areas. Not only that, not only the surface increases, but also the shape uh, of the plots change in the sense that uh, they are more compact. And this means that uh, from many points of view, uh, their uh, effectiveness uh, change because uh, um, you are very compact um, uh, forest. And this means that the, uh, the function of the forest changes in time in, in, uh, with respect to the ecological function of the, of the surface, of the, sorry, of the forest, but also, for example, as a protection from natural risks, think of avalanches or landslides and so on. And also we have to take into account the fact that the uh, climate is rapidly changing, so there is also a an additional driver to this change. So what we have done is to build a, a cartographic database for a large region, which is the Trentino region, more than 13 square kilometers, so it is quite a large region. We want to use this data set uh, to analyze the modification of the um, forest. So we need a, a, a series of maps which are uniform as uh, land use and land coverage classes, which is not always the case. We need uh, a consistent resolution and also a high resolution because we want to apply landscape analysis, so we need um, a resolution which is high enough uh, to apply some tools. And finally, we want to cover the long longest possible time span. span. So, uh, obviously, uh, some maps already exist, but they do not have all these features. So we want to build a new data set to uh, do this. And we uh, have been able to cover 155 years from an old cadastral map to a recent uh, uh, aerial uh, image. Obviously, this the, the last image is to, from 2015. As new uh, in, images are available, we can add new maps to this. And so we have basically two sets of maps. The first one is uh, uh, of the historical map, which requires a certain type, and then we show you, of uh, uh, processing from 1859 to uh, 1936. Uh, there is uh, an additional map which is more recent, so we cannot say it is historical, but uh, it has been processed as uh, the historical maps, which because it is not available as uh, a digital form. And then we have a series of aerial images from 1954 to 2015. So this is uh, uh, the list of the historical map. Uh, as you can see, there are different uh, years, obviously, very different scales, very different solution in the sense that uh, um, all these maps, but uh, the last one, were already available as digital maps, so we do not have access to the original paper map, so we have the scan. And as you can see, the resolution is very uh, different. Uh, one note about the so old, what we call Batisti uh, map, which is a map uh, of forest density, not of forest uh, location, so we try to um, GI this map, which also there are some uh, peculiarities about this map. I will show you something, but uh, um, we will not use this map for um, evaluating the forest coverage modification. These are the features of the orthophotos. As you can see, they are more uniform with respect to the uh, 
to the history of maps. The uh, main difference between these uh, images are the, the first two sets are in black and white, so more difficult to use, and the first set is available on, only as images, not as ortho images, so we also need to ortho rectify them. So the first step is obviously to auto rectify the uh, 1954 uh, image dataset. Uh, the number of images which cover the inner region is 130, but we pre-selected 19 uh, images because uh, there are obviously in this kind of set there are uh, there is a lot of overlapping, so we choose the best one because some of the images are blurred and so on. Then we. Uh, we found uh, at least uh, 16 ground on points for each image. And uh, I don't know if, you, uh, if any of you have tried this. In the mountain region, this is very difficult because you have identified buildings, roads, which existed in 1954, in this case, and they exist nowadays. So you can use uh, the coordinates of, of the current location to identify the points. So this is a very time-consuming uh, task. Once we have all the DGL, uh, the, the sorry, on map and all the other photo, obviously the next step is to classify them. Uh, we use the standard object image image uh, analysis using GRASS and R. There is a module in GRASS which runs uh, uh, all the classification in R. Uh, there are differences between the or a photo, which are classical image and historical maps in the sense that in the historical maps, you have a lot of spurious elements such as labels, the name of the places, for example, symbols, uh, you have the um, uh, political boundaries and so on. The second point is that uh, in some of our maps, uh, which are uh, and uh, uh, painted the colors for the same uh, thing category various from one sheet to another, from one part of the map to another. So you have also to take into account this. And finally, some of the maps have hatching or half tones and so on. And this requires the use of additional uh, artificial bands, uh, such as texture or high pass filter on some bands and so on. To do this, to filter out all this unwanted feature, we have developed some uh, um, GRASS modules, which you already can find in the official uh, GRASS, uh, uh, GRASS modules add-on repository. The first one, the R.field category, is the one which removes all the labels, symbols, and so on. The second one uh, is the module which can be used to estimate the size of the field that you apply to remove uh, all the unwanted <laughs> objects on your image. So the results, the, uh, the orification of the image, you see on the left, the original uh, image, on the right side, the ortho image. As you can see, the uh, LMS error is quite low because one, uh, uh, one uh, meter and 28 centimeters. We uh, tested also the displacement of some points, and we uh, found that the, the mean value of the displacement of the points on the ortho photo is about 10 meters. But the good news is that the higher values are in the higher part because it, there it is difficult to find ground control points. But in those uh, regions, there is no forest. So for our purpose, this high value is not so. Uh, Troublesome because uh, uh, the the errors of course occur where we are not interested basically in the in the surface in the location of the surface. So this is the complete uh, uh, coverage of the of, or photos. You can see some of them are darker, but again we have the complete data set. So the next step for the classification is the segmentation. If you have some experience uh, with the uh, uh, Obvia, you can you know that uh, this is the critical step in the sense that if you are able to create segment, segments uh, in a good way, then it is quite easy to uh, classify them. And here you can see uh, the parameters for the uh, segmentation of the historical map that I set, the first table, and for the or for the second. Uh, table in GRASS, it is available a module which uh, try to 
guess or to provide a better, uh, the, the, the best combination of threshold, which is the parameter which drives the similarity between the colors, let's say, of the pixel belonging to the same segment, therefore to the same class, and the minimum size of the segment of the area in pixel. And uh, you can apply this uh, uh, module, but then you have to uh, modify the values or the, the automatic system, the automatic way usually does not work well. You can use that as a starting point uh, to make uh, a better judgment, but you cannot use them, uh, the values directly. And these are the results of, after adjustment. As you can see for the uh, historical maps, uh, there is a, a certain variability in, the, in both the parameters, while for the order of all the numbers are more or less the same. And this is uh, uh, because obviously the historical maps uh, are very different, uh, so different values uh, are needed. So the next step is the classification. So we have to select some uh, um, some all some uh, training uh, segments, then classify the image, and you can see there are thousands of uh, uh, images and maps. So this is a very time-consuming task, but we have obviously scripted everything. Then for each map, uh, we have found uh, uh, 70, 750 sampling points using the 35 random sampling approach, which is done obviously after the classification. And these are the results in terms of uh, accuracy. As you can see, uh, for the historical map, the values are quite high. Uh, for the or for oh, the best uh, results are for the color images, which are the la the two last images, while values are lower for the black and white uh, images. This is uh, the results in terms of map. This is the so-called Batisti map. Uh, as you can see, we only have uh, the forest density for each district. We do not have the location of the uh, forest. So we tried this because it was an interesting study ca case for um, uh, classifying historical maps, but we cannot use that for our purpose. And these are the results for all the years. And this is the the last year. So in green, the forest coverage in 2015, and the same information as a uh, table and as uh, a chart. Here you can see that there is a, a, an increase of the forest uh, from the original, uh, the, the first year to the 1994, and then you have more or less a, a constant value, a very small increase in years. So the next step, once we have uh, all these maps, we can apply landscape uh, analysis, which means that we evaluate some metrics uh, about this uh, forest, just to understand how the function of the forest changes in time. And uh, uh, what we see is something we expected, but we uh, can now quantify, which is we have uh, very uh, we have fewer uh, forest areas, forest plots, but they are larger because they are merged together. Uh, the fetch density obviously uh, uh, decreases because uh, there are less fetches, because they, they are larger, while the edge density remains more or less the same because you have larger uh, fetches, but uh, fewer of them. So, um, uh, there is some, so I will show you some uh, uh, graphs about this, but you have to take into account that for uh, historical maps, uh, obviously we have uh, a less, uh, an information which has less resolution in the sense that, uh, for example, for the cadaster map, we have for each parcel, the parcel is about, not about the coverage, but about obviously the, uh, the ownership of the, of the land. For each parcel, we have a label, which say forest, pasture, or something like that. So we have some, something which is uh, at a special level, less uh, uh, resolution, with the resol less resolution. The second point is that for the uh, 1954 uh, or, or which uh, we uh, or, or there are some uh, some effects which we no, do not uh, uh, still understand in the sense that uh, they the um, land, landscape metrics do not have uh, a behavior which we expect. So something something is wrong, but we do not know what. So these are the uh, 
the infant matrix, the first one is the number of patients. They obviously uh, decrease, uh, decrease because there are fewer, larger patches, and this is what you see on the right side. And uh, obviously, um, the patch density, as you can see, is uh, somehow, somehow a mirror uh, behavior with the uh, patch uh, size, while the uh, landscape, uh, the edge, density is more or less constant. And there is this, uh, 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 these values for 1954, which is somehow uh, still to investigate. So in conclusion, we have created this uh, very large data set. I, uh, I, I assure you that the, there are a lot of data here. And uh, uh, with this data set, we are able to quantify some trends which are already known, but we can quantify them. Um, a comment about the, the approach, uh, it works well, but uh, you still need uh, uh, some experience because you can more or less automatize uh, all the steps, uh, but you still have to calibrate some parameters and this is not possible automatically. Well, you in principle, you can do that, uh, but experience says that uh, it doesn't work well. And uh, well, the, the fact that the, uh, the forest plots became larger and there are fewer of them means that we are losing ecotones. So the ecological function of the forest is changing in this area, obviously. Uh, what we are doing now, well, we have used this uh, maps because now we have some time series. We can apply some modeling of, or prediction, predicting future scenario, and we have done this we're using mark of chains and uh, agent-based modeling only on a, on a small area because they are very time consuming to run. So we are trying to do this and we already have done something on, uh, on small areas. Uh, we are trying to understand what uh, happened in 2018 because these areas has been affected by the so old via storm, which had, uh, which had a very uh, deep impact on the forest uh, with loss of a lot of trees and so on. And uh, as a general comment, uh, the fact that we have been able to process all this kind of different and uh, very uh, numerous uh, maps uh, um, has been possible only because we are using uh, open source uh, uh, software, in particular Grass and R. Everything has been scripted. So basically we can run all the analysis with one command and uh, come back after a week, a couple of weeks and uh, find the results and on how fast is your computer. And uh, finally, uh, the availability of this data, of these data sets. One of these data sets is already online and I guess some of you maybe have already used that. Uh, the 1936 uh, map is already online. There is a website where you can see the map, you can download the map for the whole Italy. The other data sets uh, are not uh, online because we have we are sti still clearing some problems about copyright of some maps and so on, but we hope uh, in, let's say, a couple of years, a year, I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, to be able to publish all the data set, uh, on a website where you can see the data, you can download the data, and so on. So this is more or less everything.